Hey my friends, here's your, well, the heads up to this longer podcast. It's all about self-sabotage and how to discard that badge of honour of self-sabotage. And I'm going to show you a really simple way of being able to, well, get rid of self-sabotage forever. Now that's got to be worth a listen, isn't it? Getting rid of self-sabotage easily, effortlessly, with a lot of, lot of fun. Anyway, have a listen after this. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal development unplugged. Hey, my friend. How are you doing today? This is me, Paul. Paul Clough. Personal Development Unplugged. And today, well, I want to return to the subject of this thing called self-sabotage. Because even though I have a real problem with it, not a problem with self-sabotaging myself, but a problem with people that wear self-sabotage as a badge of honour. I don't know. In some ways, it's as if they give themselves the excuse not to do things. Now, I'm not saying that's you. But that's what happens. Sometimes we give ourselves an excuse not to do the things we really want to do because of the consequences, the consequences of what might or might not happen. And you see, self-sabotage is not procrastination because I had to think about this and I, because they're both not getting, or well, they are really, because if you think about it, procrastination, that's just putting off the thing that you're eventually going to do. That's what happens with procrastination. I put it off, I put it, I put it off, and put it off, and then that deadline comes around, and then I just get on and bloody do it. It's as simple as that, and it's a very simple process to change. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about self-sabotage. You see, when your behaviours interfere with your long-standing goals, that was a definition I found on the, the internet. Self-sabotage could be defined as when your behaviours interfere with your long-standing goals. But I felt that was a bit general. Sort of true, but a bit too general for me. Or behaviours and thought patterns that hold you back from doing what you want to do. And I thought, that's a little bit better. Then I had another look at another one. and It was on a psychological uh, website. It says, when we have self-sabotage, we go into deep trauma and it affects our relationships. And I thought, what a lot of BS. We want to get back to simple things. And I think that thing about Behaviours and thought patterns that are holding you back from doing what you want to do, which I said was a better definition, but it forgets the one thing that we come back to time and time again. There's an intention for having those behaviours, for having those thought patterns that effectively hold you back. Because they are very effective, aren't they? You see, let me tell you a story. Because I don't want you to get lost in that BS because I know that's going to be affecting your dreams. And I say if we allow ourselves to get off the hook, as it were, give ourselves the excuse, that's not taking responsibility. Excuses are just buying into the effects. And we want to take responsibility, be it cause for everything that we do. Take full responsibility. Because when we do that, what happens? We get empowered. What else happens? We get motivated and we get confident to get the result. And when we get the result, we get even more confident. Our self-esteem starts to just grow and grow. So let me take you back to this story. I think I've told it of a sort before, but hey, it's a good example. It's about me being a trainer. And the early stages of, of being a trainer, I used to shy away from demos. And I, th- I just thought of something else. Before I was even a trainer, I can remember when I was a like a newly fledged, fledgling as it were, hypnotherapist, NLP practitioner. And I would work with people and I'd be really confident of the work I did. I get on well. I seem to get the results. People in front of me seem to change. I would always be a little bit reluctant to test my work because they seemed happy enough. So I just let it go. And then I thought to myself, hmm, is that really working? Is that doing my client the service? Because just because they, they're talking a good talk, Oh, that was really good, Paul. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's really good. I really enjoyed that session. Did that tell me if they'd got the result they wanted? 
No, not at all. So in the end, I was procrastinating on finding out if they got the results. Why? Because what happened if they didn't? They'd be hurt, I'd be hurt. And what a BS way of looking at things. Because if they didn't get the result, I'm the man to get their result or help them get their result. It just needed a bit of tweaking. And if we didn't know what to tweak, they won't get the results. So you have to test. And in the end, I just suddenly decided, well, that's not right. I've got to test. And I test the hell out of my work in the office. And then I go and tell my client, you go and test this work. Go and test it. Don't try to change your life. Just go out, test it, go to the places where you used to have the problems, the issues, and notice how different it is. Because if it's not different, we're still going to change it. But if it is different, then you know, as a client, I've changed. And that is such a big validation. So anyway, I'd, I'd learned that. But then when it comes to being a trainer, I was really shy. I like the word uh, shy, but I was shying away from some particular demos, demonstrations. Because obviously in a training, you talk about a particular process to teach. And then you would do a demonstration with uh, one of the practitioners. And then they'd go away and practice that or do a drill and practice that particular process. Then you'd come and unpack it and do that. But you had to do a demo. Now, on the demos I liked, I was up for it. But there was one or two things that I just wasn't, I don't know, there was something about them. And I had this little thought in my hand, my mind, in my head. What would happen if I failed in front of everybody? What would I look like? How would I feel? And it wasn't really how would I feel, it was how bad would I feel? How embarrassed would I be? How hurt would I be inside? And then I'd get that imposter syndrome that we've talked about. You know, I'm, you know, I shouldn't be here. I've been found out. And so I used to shy away. And they were the things I weren't quite 100% certain of when I used to do my therapy work as well. So if you think about it, why was I teaching this stuff if I wasn't 100% confident? But the thing was, I was 100% confident that the process worked. I wasn't 100% confident that I could just go with that process without having to read anything on that. There's only this one particular thing that was really bugging me as well. One particular demo that I used to shy away from. So how did it come to the big bit? Because I was pretty good at I, I just I was looking and getting things right because I used to do it with my, my son as well. So he would do get him somehow to do that demo. And then one one day or one weekend, we were doing uh, a timeline therapy and I was doing a demo and I was looking through who did what demos and I could see, because we used to do them like alternatively and I could see, oh, blimey, tomorrow morning, it'll be my turn and it'll be my turn to do that thing, that thing that I'm just not confident in doing. Now, what do I do? Do I just tell, tell Joseph, hey, Joseph, I'm not really confident in doing this. Mm, couldn't do that. Because that would mean even more embarrassment to me. I'd be even more hurt inside. Couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. Now, I could have... Well, what could I do? There's nothing else I could do. I, I had to find a way of getting rid of this procrastination, putting things in the way, getting these behaviours and thought patterns changed. So I, I knew the first thing to do was obviously go back over that process. I knew it. I really knew it. And when I looked at it, I really did know I knew it. But did that change my thought pattern? Nah, because I still had that thing, what if I failed? What if it went wrong? How bad would it be? How embarrassing would it be? And how hurt would I be about that embarrassment? And all those people looking at me saying, you know, I came to learn from you. But anyway, I then, well, I had this thought in the end of the day, I just, I just got to deal with this because I know it. I really have to deal with it. How can I deal with this? Because it was really pissing me off now because, you know, I was getting more and more worried and it was silly because I know I was bloody good at this stuff. So I sat down and thought, well, what's, what's the thing I'm missing? What am I missing? And this is the question we should, I guess, I say should. I don't like to should all over us, but it's a question that we should ask if things aren't working well. And I just said to myself, to that you and I inside me, what are you trying to do? What's the positive intention of having me keep sabotaging, getting out of the way, pulling back, having all these different thoughts? What's the positive intention? And it was a flash of the bleeding obvious. We always get that flash of the bleeding obvious. It's an aha moment. Well, I was just protecting you, Paul. Didn't quite in those words, but 
it was like, I'm just protecting you from all that stuff. But I thought to myself, you know, the more I try to evade this, I'm embarrassing myself. I felt embarrassed for trying to do that. I felt hurt for not doing it, not doing the stuff I knew I could do. I felt I wasn't giving the service that I knew I could do. And that embarrassed me. And that hurt me. And I thought to myself, because I'm not an imposter, if I do my best, I think I can do bloody good. So I said to my unconscious mind, you know, this isn't protecting me at all. In fact, it's making me even worse and actually doing the bloody demo, all these things inside me, because I'm living with this bloody fear over and over again. And the thing is, I'm going to be doing it. Whatever happens, I'm going to be doing it. So if we don't get our act together, I will get embarrassed. I will get hurt. And that's a complete conflict. A complete conflict with what you, my unconscious mind, are trying to do for me. So I just asked myself, what could or how could I do this and feel comfortable to get the result I wanted, to be able to do a good demo, to inspire people to do a good drill, a good practice, to learn better, to share my skills? What would it be like if I could do that using all the skills I have? How safe would it be if I just used all the skills I had in me? And I thought to myself, well, if I did that, I'd be really safe. I'd be protected. Because if something was to happen that wasn't quite supposed to happen in that demo, I'd be able to deal with it as I do with clients. I just treat them as a client in my office. And if things didn't go the way I thought they might go, I will adapt because I've got the skills to adapt. And when I do that, how good do I feel? When I'm working with a client and I'm adapting, I feel actually better than just doing the, the, that, one, that one process because I'm actually getting to the real specifics with a client to get them to real, really change, to help them change. And it just made me so confident. And so I got to the point. I did that demo that following day. And guess what? It didn't go exactly to plan. But it was like I was on sort of autopilot because in some ways I was, I was listening to myself as well thinking, bloody hell, Cluffy, you're, this is really working well. But it's a great demo because it's showing these practitioners how things can go slightly not to script. And here's how to deal with it. And I dealt with it. And that client was my client up on that stage. And they got the result they wanted. How did I feel? Awesome. What happened to my confidence? Well, I got competent. I was so confident in my competency, my skill level. Did I feel an imposter? No way. Yeah, are there people better than me? Absolutely. Did I do a good job? Absolutely. No more embarrassment, no more hurt. So it was literally understanding the intention and then just asking specifically, and this is the thing, specifically, question to my unconscious mind, how can I get that result? a different way to let go of the conflict and feel safe, protected, feeling good, being able to access my skills. Because accessing my skills was the most safest thing my unconscious mind could do for me to let me access my skills and just be. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And then I adapted that for every client I work with now, whether it's online or whether it's in the office or wherever. If I'm doing a, well, if I'm basically I'm doing anything that needs some type of presentation for me to show my skills, I have this one question. I actually wrote it out and it starts off with, what would it be like to, and then I'd say to do the stuff I want to do using and accessing all the skills I want. And I wrote it all out and I used to read it like on an eight by five card. I used to read it before I saw every client and now I just say it in my head. It's there. It's ingrained like a stick of cluffy rock right in the middle of me. It's ingrained in my mind. It is the saving, safe behavior. It is the saving, safe thought pattern. And it gets my unconscious mind to step up the plate with me so we can both feel that, that thrill, that bit of magic when it all just goes the way you want, to, want it to go. Let's just unpack that a little bit. Exactly what I did. You see, recognizing the conflict. So you have to understand what's the positive intention your unconscious mind is, is trying to do for you by giving you these, call it 
negative behaviors, but behaviors that allow you to try to, you know, veer away from doing those wonderful goals that you, you want, those dreams that you want. They don't have to be that big. But to me, that demo was a goal, was a dream, just a little one along with a, within a big dream. And when you understand the conflict between the positive intention and what was actually, you know, the result, you can then just form your own question. How could this be better? How could we, both of us, conscious and unconsciously, find a better way? You really just get more specific in the context. So for me, when I'm working with a client, I am not just going, oh, what would it be like to do this? No, I, what would it be like to, to be able to access all the skills for this client? I'd say their name. To allow them to get their goal as quick as possible and even better than they could imagine, even better than I could imagine and learn along the way so I can have those learnings for the next client and do it all within a particular period of time and feel this way. So I'm doing it a really, a real specific question to my unconscious mind. And the real beauty and magic of this is you don't have to answer it. You don't have to do those visualizations. We can do later, but on this particular question, you don't do anything. You just ask the question of your unconscious mind, providing it is all in the positive. So you know exactly how you want to be. And for me, the B was, the being, was being able to access all my skills. Everything I've learned, hypnotically, nlp he well, using my NLP skills, my timeline therapy skills, everything else I'd learned, my communication skills, everything. And it just condenses itself. And I just do this all the time now. It just becomes a wonderful behavior because my unconscious mind knows now this is what to do. And by giving it a target to exceed, I know it will. So how could you do this? Well, I think, as we said, get specific. Not just, I want to get better at talking to people. No, let's get more specific. What, let's, who do you want to talk to? Maybe it is to do something re- in this dream. What is this dream specifically? What is this goal that you want to achieve? Because you see, if we get specific now, and as you get the result... The results will then generalize into other areas of your life. So as you get more confident in this specific area of your life, the old clever guarantee comes in, you will get more confident in being you in different contexts because it just happens that way. It's like the ripples of change. You never know how far they will go, but they will go far and wide. You just don't know how far. But you then, you know, if you're, when, when you have a self-esteem that is getting better, fuller, richer. You take that into different contexts. You access different skills, but you know how to access those skills. Your physiology gets to be the way you want to be. You're communicating not only with your voice, your words, but with your whole body, because you're dealing with one specific issue or dream that you have. And then that will generalize into different areas of your life. So funny enough, your work area will maybe get better or your socializing will suddenly get more comfortable or your relationships just suddenly get a little bit deeper, a bit richer. So you just have to ask yourself, once you've been specific, what is the intention? This for sabotaging, this sabotaging behavior, it's protecting me from what? Because it's a protection measure. So what are the emotions it's protecting you from? Now, for me, it was embarrassment, hurt, and that feeling of being an imposter. What if I failed? And once I understood that, and once I realized, well, actually, there's the same feeling that I'm feeling without, you know, when I am sabotaging myself, and we take that responsibility to to make those choices to sabotage ourselves, we can actually say, well, it's not working. Let's find a better way. So we can keep that uh, positive intention protection me from that. Now, how can you do that? Sometimes you want to do it a little bit more consciously as well. And this is what I do with my clients sometimes. I say, well, you know, in other contexts in your life, let's forget the issue for the moment. When you are doing something that you love, can you think of one particular thing that you, you love doing? Can you? Can you think of something now that you really love doing? And when you think of that time, think of a time when you were doing it. And if you went back there now, did you feel unsafe? Did you feel any of those feelings and emotions that that unconscious mind was protecting you from in that self-sabotaging? And the answer is obviously no. Well, this is no, isn't it? And the, th- the reason you don't feel unsafe, because 
it's not necessarily you feel safe because when you're safe, you are just safe. You are just being and you are accessing all the skills that you need to do that particular thing. And you're just showing your unconscious mind, look over here in this un- this context, it really works. How can we take some of those skills and put them into this new context? And then do that a few times. Just think of another time when you were you're just enjoying yourself, doing something with ease. Maybe it was, you know, if we're talking about a bit of self-sabotaging on a project, what other projects have you done? Hobbies, their projects, things that you've done that you've just enjoyed doing that were successful. And get your unconscious mind to remember too. Because when you remember these, your unconscious mind is learning. Said, oh, if I use that, and you can ask the question, what would it be like if I use these type of skills in that other area of my life, which where we're holding ourselves back, shying away maybe? And it's quite simple. You, you, you could visualize it out there, or your unconscious mind will visualize it out there now, and go, well, that would be better, wouldn't it? Then all you have to do is formulate your own question. Now, before you do that, set your state. Set your state. And how do you set your state? Well, you go back to that time when you felt good, when you felt confident, when you had that self-esteem, when you knew things were going to work out well. And as you set that state, just ask yourself a question. What would it be like? What would it be like to do this, this, and this, and feel comfortable, to feel whatever you want to feel, to to achieve this result and feel good? And always, always finish that question with, and enjoy the process, not just the result, not just the beginning, the whole blooming adventure, every step of the way, because we will enjoy everything, don't we? Even difficult things can be enjoyable because we know we're learning, we know we're building our confidence and our competence, because that's just what happens. And then you can start thinking, well, when I've done that, what else could I do? What else could I do? So, it's just a small step away. That was my, my meta little, I have a little meta box on my notes here. And when I was thinking about this, I said, it's just a small step away. It's only a big step when you don't take that small step. And it's really just a change of perspective. Get it right, Paul. Because you're looking at the problem now from outside the problem. How you want to be, not what you fear. And when you're in that dissociated, looking in at the problem, you can say, well, yeah, I can see now that I'm not getting the result that my unconscious mind is trying to do. It's it's trying to protect me from this and it's not working. How can I get it a different way? And when you do that, when you do that, you can have an expectation of finding the result. And that's a wonderful state to be because it's expectation, not hope now, expectation. You know somewhere you are going to find the right question. You're going to find the right state because you know what you want. You know how it will feel at the end. So what would make that up? And when you do it, you'll feel empowered. Not just empowered at the end because you've achieved it, but you'll feel empowered through, again, that whole adventure. You'll feel empowered to do more of this in different areas of your life. You'll be motivated to stretch your boundaries, to, we call it enforcing the boundaries, but enforcing means pushing them further bigger, wider, stretching that just that little bit more so you can achieve. I'll say that again. So you can achieve everything you dream of and more. This or something better. And when you do all of this, I was thinking, why is this so important? Because see, I felt the big why of this, I guess, is because when you start doing all of this, it'll open up your dreams. It will allow you to dream even more because you know now you will find a way. Maybe you don't know the way quite yet, but you'll ask the right question. And for some of us who know this stuff, but like me, know it, but we need to re-remember it. I know that's not a word, but we've got to re-remember the things that we already know to get ourselves in this position and go, well, it works so well there, Paul. What else? How can we do that? And then we'll never wear that BS badge of honour. Oh, I always, I always self-sabotage myself. No, you're not going to let yourself off that hook. Or in other words, you, you know, that's letting yourself off the hook of, of not, not trying. Because we don't try. We do. We be. We are. And I know because you're here, hearing these things, I know you and your conscious and your unconscious mind 
the cogs are turning. It's like that neural pathway. We've now just tipped that domino in that domino rally of this particular neural neural pathway. And now it's beginning to meet the other one. And that synaptic gap is beginning to fire and fire. And what fire together? Wire together. And it becomes a new way. But then that new way becomes the norm. And the norm then becomes something to exceed, to become the old norm. So you can find a new norm. And we're stretching. We're empowering ourselves. And guess what we're also doing? We are being the change we want to see us in ourselves and we're being the change we want to see in others because that's unconscious. We don't necessarily go out there and go, oh, I want to be the change I want to see in everyone else because we are. We just become it. We become that living example of what's possible. Little baby steps will make massive ripples, waves of change. It's like that flapping butterfly, remember? The winds of change. We will do a storm of change. But we all have to flap our wings. We all have to stretch ourselves. We all have to be and do. And this is just one way. I'm sure I'm going to return to this because I'm going to think of different ways and other ways. But this is, I think, the core. Understanding. And it's the same with most things I do now. Understanding the conflict between the intention and the results you're getting. And where's that conflict? And when your your unconscious mind understands it's a conflict, it's got to find a better way for you. But we need to help and work in tandem. We need to be aligned with that result. And we just need to talk to each other. Talk to the to both of every one of you. I hope that makes sense. I really do hope that makes sense. It sort of made sense to me. Well, I know it does. But I just hope I, I have communicated it in a way that made sense to you and will inspire you when and if, not the when, if, let's have an if, if you ever get to that particular area of your life that we would call, I'm starting to self-sabotage or have a sabotaging behavior, because it's only behavior, isn't it? It's a behavior, it's a thought pattern. If I notice that, and when I notice that, I know I'm going to change it, because that's just another flag. It's another another thing from your unconscious mind saying, I'm trying to do this, and you're consciously saying, well, it's not working, but I still want it. I want you to protect me, but I also want to be protected and do that stuff, because it'll make us better. It'll allow us to grow. Now, I know, one thing I do know, inside all of that, there's some golden nuggets. I do hope they shone out for you. And what I'd love you to do, as always, please pass this on. Share this podcast, this episode, because it will make a difference. It will make a difference to the people you share it to. It'll make a difference to the number of people who are listening. Hopefully, you and they will put a review up or, more importantly, subscribe which again helps all those, I don't understand them, but there's a lot of things called algorithms, which will make this a little bit more easier to find. So more people get to listen and and hopefully begin to express themselves, stretch themselves, be who they really or really are. We talk about singing from our own voice, our true voice, showing up, being who you really are, the real you, the real them. So if you could, and you would, now we've finished this, just for the moment, just share it to two, three, all your contacts. Now, that'd be too much, wouldn't it? But just, if you would, share. Share this episode and the podcast, Personal Development Unplugged. Because if you think about it, so many people will tell you the secrets of self-sabotage. There's no, no bloody secret. It's simples. In simplicity, there's genius. And that's what we're going to do. Breaking down these myths, these taboos, these secrets into simple steps that you can take, I can take. And if we can find a a simpler way, not too simple, because we want to make sure we get the return on our investment, on the highest investment, the goal, the rich rewards. But we need to share it. Share it into this integrated field of learning that I bang on about every bloody episode, only because I believe in it so much, so passionate about sharing this stuff. If I wasn't passionate about it, I wouldn't be doing it. And I know you would be here listening if you weren't passionate about it too. So let's be passionate. Find the passion. Allow the passion to throb through you. (laughs) That's a, well, that's a picture, isn't it? And have more fun than you can stand. And stand and be and do. Anyway, enjoy. Let me know how you got on with this and any other of the podcasts. You can just email me, feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. And if there's something that 
just tweaked your imagination or there's something you go, oh, I wish you'd talk about this. I got this little issue, but I wish you'd talk about it. Something a bit more specific. Let me know through that same email, feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. And, well, it won't go anywhere else by me. You get a personal reply and hopefully then there'll be a real change and a real set of skills that we can develop together because that really makes my heart sing and makes my little brain cogs move around to find these these ways for you even if it means developing a new process which i'm in the midst of doing already something spurred my mind a little while ago and i'm writing it out now because i've tried it with a few people i'm going to do it with a few more but it really seems to be getting great results and this just comes from really just being there letting the passion grow don't have to find your passion, just let the passion come out. There you go. Anyway, as I always said, and I have said already, have more fun than you can stand. And I wonder, see, if I talk to you, the unconscious mind, what would it be like? Oh, no, as a question, Cluffy. What would it be like if you were to surprise their conscious mind for feeling happy for no reason? Ooh, what would that be like at any time in the day? Just surprise them feeling happy for no reason. Okay, until next time, this is me, your friend, Paul, Paul Clough, Personal Development Unplugged. Ta-da! Hey, don't you just hate selling your own stuff? I know I do. I can sell things. I've got all those techniques and things like that, but that's not about selling my own stuff. But I do need to let you know. I We've got a lot of free hypnosis tracks over 40 hypnosis tracks at paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast but on top of that there are some premium hypnosis tracks together with two i think really really quite good well not quite good paul they are good effective things that work they are two programs one is free your life of anxiety first five days are absolutely bloody free so what have you got to lose other than your anxiety? It certainly gives you a great insight into what anxiety is all about for you. And then obviously then there's the premium side. But also we have supreme inner confidence. And don't be put off by the word supreme. It's a little bit of clickbait, I guess. It's just about having supreme inner confidence in yourself, where you have that inner strength, that inner confidence, that inner competence. And there are, I think, really good processes that I've developed that take away the the uncertainty, the, the fear of the past that created your, your unconfidence, then allowing you to access all the resources that you need to be totally confident, supremely inner confidence. Have supreme inner confidence. And then takes you into the future so you can actually have your unconscious mind like program the things that could happen in the future. If they did, you would have that supreme inner confidence without thinking. Because that's what it's all about. Becoming naturally, supremely inner confident. Confident in yourself and your own inner abilities. Okay, so that's it. If you would just go there, have a look. They're both at Paul Clough Online. And if you want to go there, there directly, go to paulcloughonline.com forward slash anxiety or paulcloughonline.com forward slash confidence as simple as that have a look around every product has a money back guarantee if you don't like it or you don't get the result no questions asked okay please have a look it would be great if you did warning you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.